Hello everyone. This week we are going to talk about the fall 2019 garden. I know this video is very very late but uh, we somehow managed to get it done and we at least have a couple of things coming out of the ground. So to get started let's talk a little bit about how I tried to attempt to plan this thing this year. Because I didn't want a repeat of summer, I tried to really think through where I put all of the plants this year. So the first thing I did is check out what is actually growing down here at this time of year. There are a couple places online that I look. I can put some links in the description for those of you who are interested who are down here in Arizona. After I took a look at what's growing, I pulled out all of our seeds and basically went through and pulled out anything that was on my list and set it aside. I also went through everything and pulled out anything that looked like it would be growing at this time of year based off of its germination temperature. I found that almost everything either was 85 and below or 75 and below. So I took all the 85 and below and put that in one pile and then I put the 75 and below in a secondary pile. Those seeds are to be put in the ground a little bit later since we aren't quite at 75 or below on a regular basis. From there, I took a look to see what was partial shade and what was full sun. For winter, we really only have two areas on the property that we can grow. We basically have the front yard and the south yard. The front yard does have early morning sun, but it's in the shade most of the day. The south yard is 100% in sun, but depending on where you put your seeds, you can sometimes have issues with frost. We don't bother planting in the west yard because it doesn't really get enough sun. It's so close to the house that it spends most of the time in shade. And last year, we didn't really have very good success with things growing out there. Only partial sun stuff really works in our west yard in the winter. What? Oh no. Oh no. I also took a look at some of the soil characteristics just to make sure that there wasn't anything else I needed to know. There are some plants that you really shouldn't plant next to. Gray, quit, she's eating tape. Stop. There are certain things you shouldn't plant next to one another and there she goes ripping more tape off. And then there's a plane. And a cat. There are certain things you just shouldn't plant next to one another and it turns out that a lot of vegetation that you grow in the winter, things like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, those sorts of things, it seems like they need more fertile soil. So I wanted to try and make sure to group any special considerations next to one another to minimize the amount of work that we have to do. So basically, once I had my piles of what was full sun and what was partial sun, and then had the soil considerations, I basically knew where to plant things. Anything that's partial sun will go in the front, anything that's full sun will go in the back. The real question becomes how to set up the planter to maximize the growing that we're going to get. So for the south yard, we decided to use two stock tanks and one little two by four piece of leftover wood stuff that we had laying around the property. For the stock tanks, we decided to use these because they basically have holes in the bottom, so they're not useful for holding water. Plus, this allows us to basically bypass some of the shortcomings of our native soil, and we can rely on a mixture of potting soil and compost instead. Now, I don't really want to pay for this amount of soil, so we put a bunch of paper products in the bottom and then filled that with water. The hope is that it will collect all that water and it'll slowly permeate up into the soil acting as a sponge and that the roots will come down and eventually all of it will decompose. So once we had all of the paper sponge in, we went and basically collected any leftover potting soil that we had around the property and put it into the planter to the east and the tank's green stuff potting mix went into the planter that is to the west. We put these in a location where hopefully they'll get the maximum amount of sun that's humanly possible, but time will tell if we actually did this right or not. I then laid in the seeds in an attempt to actually know what was growing where. I wrote the name of the plant on some masking tape and put the masking tape on the side of the planter 
Turns out when you water it, it kind of becomes illegible, so I don't know that that's a good idea, but that's what I did. I also put some tool over the top and tied it taut with some cordage around the outside of the tank. As the plants get taller and bigger and are at less risk of being eaten by birds, then I will pull the tool off. Of course, I was not expecting cat poop to be a thing that I had to protect against, and it didn't really do the job in that case. And then after that, we waited a while. And here's where we're at a couple weeks later. This is the planter that is to the east. So it is all of the leftover potting soil that we found across the property. This is mostly radishes and carrots of various types. Towards the end here, you've got chicory and dandelion, although mostly, mostly just chicory because the dandelion looks pretty empty. We expected some of this stuff could just be grass. We put some grass into the ground this year to see if it will help give the animals something to eat and put some roots in the ground, so we're not sure. Because this is a mixture of potting soil, there's possibility of uh, spare seeds from other things as well, so honestly, who really knows? And here is the bin to the west. As you can see, not much is really growing. So far, it's really only mustard and a handful of Aleppo lettuces. Even though this is a higher quality soil, we think it's because this is mostly filled with lettuces and other cold weather vegetables, and it just hasn't really been cold enough yet. It was getting cold, but now we're back in the 80s, so not really sure how this one's going to do. There's a bunch of lettuce seeds on top of the crocuses, so we'll see if that affects how they grow at all. You can see here, this is our one, one of the crocuses. And it doesn't look like any of the other sprouts. So we'll see what happens, see if we get any saffron in a couple of years. And then finally we have the piece of wood thing, whatever you want to call it. This is nothing but green lettuce type varieties and a handful of radish plants. We've also got, I think, two tomatoes in here, and these were just planted last weekend because we were waiting for the weather to get cooler. We have the tiniest amount of sprouts that you can't really see. That's really all the sprouts we have so far. So we'll see what happens once it gets a little cooler. Look at these massive holes that the quails end up digging up when they take their dust baths. We have a bevy of at least 20 out here, and they really, uh, really like to do their own landscaping. Here's some examples of the uh, grass growing that we put down. Again, we're hoping that maybe the animals, the rabbits and such, will want to eat the grass instead of our plants. The tool down here is pr protecting Tiny little sprouts, hopefully tomatoes. False tansy asters are still alive. They're still producing flowers. And our wolfberry one and two are still alive. You might remember that we had yellow mustard here and we did not replant it. It seems like it reseeded itself. So we have a handful of yellow mustard plants growing back here again. And it would seem that our amaranth decided to reseed itself as well. Now we did have a really random frost that occurred, so this damage here is from that one singular frost that cropped up out of the middle of nowhere in October. And this stuff is to protect everything from eating it, same with the tool. These showed up right after the rains in September. And right after that, it basically got into the 80s on a regular basis, and everything just kind of popped out of the ground out of nowhere. We also have this really big spider's nest, if you can kind of see it, right there. 
the tension from it is so strong that uh, it pulls these strings. Been living there ever since we moved this cage over here. We also have this thing. I'm not really sure what it is or what it's doing, but everything wanted to eat it, so we've had to protect it, and my phone refuses to focus on it. So we'll see what this is. Over in the front yard, we have a mixture of cumin, cilantro, and crocuses. Though these are all likely cilantro at this stage. These leaves down here look pretty cilantro-like. You can see over here, we got the crocus coming in again. This was my attempt at celery. I don't think it's gonna pan out. We have one Gila squash that got mixed in with the sweet potato. And there's its flowers. It still needs to be put into the ground. We're not entirely sure where to put it yet though. So we'll see what happens with it. We also have peas over in the front yard. And you can see behind it, crocuses are coming in. Pineapple. Ducklings and a dog. Catnip. The one we had before died out because the summer just wouldn't go away. So we're gonna try again. We've also got beet greens. And I believe that's an elephant ear of some kind. That's from grandma. One random onion. Don't know what it's doing there. And yes, grass. This whole area was hopefully going to be nice and dense, but our outdoor feral cats like to use the uh, tanks compost stuff as a litter box so this pad over here is pretty much barren because the cats dug all the seed up to use it as a cat box this is mostly for the cats to eat and also have greens on hand for the baby ducks this is our one thyme plant it's managed to survive and these are our sad etoy onions have also managed to survive but are not doing so hot. And you mix with them crocus. Also crocuses. You excited? Yeah. Hi, Torty. So this is just a couple days later and I wanted to show you how much larger all these greens have gotten already. Same with this one. These mustard plants were tiny last time. I know it's hard to see through the tool. And then we've also got the amaranth that is starting to get its little floret. And this one is too you can see how quickly things grow in just a couple days. See you next time.